Good morning, Geometry. Happy Monday morning, April 27th. Today, our target is to be able to write the equation of a line that is parallel or perpendicular to another line. And we know that you've been watching lots of videos for other classes, so we're going to try to make this as painless as possible for you. Mrs. Talhami was kind enough to already do one through four written out what the work should look like, but we'll take a brief moment right now just to go over it verbally, just to make sure you remember how to find the slope and the y-intercept so you can create an equation of a line. Great, and um, if you would like to practice this on your own, we will make sure to attach a blank copy of this worksheet to the lesson. So if you'd like to take some time and try it and then match your answers with mine, that would be some great practice. So if you take a look here, it's asking you to write the equation of this line passing through negative four, five, and two, negative four. So my first step to write the equation is, is to find the slope. So this was one way in which that you could find the slope. You can use the formula y minus y over x minus x. Another way is if you plotted the two points using the graph given, you could have done rise over run. Then when I drew a perfectly straight line, I noticed that the y-intercept worked out perfectly at negative 1. So I actually did not do the extra math to find the y-intercept. I was just able to find it on the graph. So that's the equation here in red. Then for the second one, for negative 5, 0 and 4, comma 6, I kind of did the same thing. I used the um, slope formula to find the slope. But then when I was looking at this line, the y-intercept was mm, a little funky here. So I actually did some math. I'll zoom in for you to see the math here. So I used the equation y equals mx plus b. I plugged in my slope, which is 2 thirds. And then I used one of these two points. I chose the one that had zero because I felt that was easier when I have a zero. So I plugged in zero for y and negative five for x. And then I solved for b. When I completed solving for b, I got 10 thirds. So my y-intercept is 10 thirds here. And you could just leave it like that. And remember, it doesn't matter which point you pick to plug it in. Remember, we always say, pick a point and plug it in. And again, Mrs. Tohami explained to you why she picked the first point, because it had a zero. She thought it might be easier to use those numbers. Great. And then for the third equation here, passing through negative 3, negative 1, and 1, negative 7. I figured there were a lot of negatives in these coordinates. So instead of doing the slope formula, we just did rise over run. Okay, now some of you would have done rise over run, but I like things to look a little bit more pretty and not overlap, so I actually did it this way. So here, the vertical is always your rise, and the horizontal is always your run. So the vertical distance here is 6, and the horizontal distance is 4, and since this from left to right, this line is going down. It is a negative 6 over 4, which reduces to negative 3 halves. And then I'd take a look at the... Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Murphy? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It seems to me that you did the exact same thing that you did in number 2. You picked a point and plugged it in once you realized that that y-intercept was not very nicely situated on a corner. Yep. And uh, you could choose either of two equations. Some of you would have chosen the second one because there's only one negative instead of two negatives. So I actually chose the first one, uh, just force of habit. Plugged in for y and for x and the slope. And I got myself a negative 11 hat. So that's my y-intercept for this green, the third equation. So I labeled them y1 for the first one y2 for the second one, and y3 for the third one. I like that you follow the directions, Mrs. Tohami, in number four, where it said graph and label all three equations. Nice and thorough. Thank you. So for number four, it's asking, what do you notice about the slopes 
of equations y1 and y2. So it's this red line and this purple line. Now if we take a look here at their slopes, the slope for y1 is negative 3 halves and the slope for y2 is a positive 2 thirds. What do you notice? Ms. Murphy, what do you notice? First of all, I notice that they're opposite signs. One's a negative and one's a positive. And secondly, I notice that they're reciprocals of each other. Recip flip. They're flipped over. And I remember from the other lesson that opposite reciprocals form perpendicular lines. They're perpendicular slopes. So that means When I look at those two lines, that's really neat. I can see with the red and the purple, they make that perfect L. I'm glad you put that right angle there to show that perpendicular lines make right angles. Perfect L's. Okay. With a T. Then if you take a look here, it says, what do you notice about the slopes of equations y1 and y3? So it's the red and the green. So here, if I take a look, what do you notice? I notice that they're exactly the same. They have the same slopes. Same slopes means that they are parallel lines. Parallel lines have the same slopes. There's the slopes right there in the word parallel. And then take a look at how I labeled them. Not that it asks you to label that they're parallel, but remember arrows mean that they are parallel. Great, so this was just a little introduction. Of course, you all know to pause the video any and every time you need time to catch up with the notes or to work on something on your own. You can pause and start as needed. All right, so let's do some practice here. So this initial practice is just for you to go back. If you could find the slope of the lines parallel. So if the slope is two thirds, what would be the slope of a line parallel? Not a trick question there. If the slope of a line is two-thirds, what is the slope of a line perpendicular? So just like we were just talking about, Ms. Murphy just went over the difference. Then over here, this is also some review. If I give you these two lines, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So to do that, you need to compare their slopes. But take a look at these three other questions. We're actually going to take a moment to do one of them with you so that you can determine whether they are parallel perpendicular or neither. So, Ms. Murphy, why don't you walk okay. us through the second one? Go ahead. When you look at these equations, I'm worried that you might look at that three and six and compare them thinking they're the slopes because they're in front of the X and tell me that they're neither parallel nor perpendicular. But we want to make sure that you really remember that you cannot compare two equations unless they are in slope intercept form. They need to be in y equals mx plus b form. Then you can compare their slopes. So let's go back to algebra one last year when you learned how to do this and get y by itself. So we'll start by rewriting the equation. So nice to have a couple of different colors to organize your work, Mrs. Tahami. I bet the students at home might have two different colors they can use as well. I All right, so. so to get Y by itself, you know me, I like to draw my street down the equal sign to show that there's two sides of the equation. And keeping in mind that I want to get Y by itself, I'm going to move that 3X family to the other side of the street. I'm going to take the whole 3X, subtract it from both sides, Bring down what's left over. So on the left, I have 4y. Be very careful. We're not doing 9 minus 3. They are not like terms. I'm going to put them in order. Negative 3x 
plus 9. Remember, it's y equals mx plus or minus b. So we want to keep it in that order. To get y by itself, everybody is going to get divided by that 4. Everybody. Very fair and balanced here in, in algebra. And we're finally left with y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 9 fourths. And let's highlight that slope because that's really what we're going to be focusing on when we're doing our comparison. And we're going to do the same for the second line. You might want to pause the video here and see if you can get y by itself. That's a very important skill. So let's bring our x term to the other side of the equation. Bring down what we have left. And everybody's going to get divided by the 8. Now, we're not ready to compare yet because we always want our fractions to be in simplest form where possible. So let's look at that negative 6 over 8. I realize I can divide by 2s, simplify by 2. So negative, how many 2s are in 6? 3. How many 2s are in 8? 4. And I could bring the rest down. And 4 over 8 reduces to 1 half. Again, let's highlight our slope and compare these two yellow highlighted slopes. I'm noticing that they are exactly the same. Negative 3 fourths equals negative 3 fourths. Same slopes means, you got it, parallel lines. All right, so... I would go on if I were you to try the other two examples and then you can come back later and look at the posted answer key to compare your answers to. All right, number four. Write the equation of a line parallel. So above parallel, let's just make a note to ourselves, parallel lines are going to need same slope. So maybe underline parallel, same slope, y equals 1 half x minus 1 that passes through the point negative 2, 3. And again, let's be consistent about labeling our points x and y. Because that kind of will help us to remember, oh yeah, I need to substitute that in. Okay. So write the equation of a line. So let's start. y equals mx plus b. I know it needs to be parallel, so I could put in that same slope. Look at that equation, and you will see the slope is in front of the x, 1 over 2. So we can replace that into our equation for the slope. Does that negative 1 in that equation matter, Miss Murphy? Are we going to use it? The y-intercept doesn't matter when we're comparing lines. We're only looking at the slope. So no, it does not matter. And we're going to take that point, since it passes through the point negative 2, 3, that means that negative 2, 3 can be substituted in. So instead of y, we'll put a 3. Instead of x, we'll put a negative 2. Loving how you put those parentheses. Keep your work nice and clean. So a half of negative 2 is negative 1. Add 1 to both sides, and B will give you 4, because 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay. Now well, we can write our final equation, substituting in our slope and y-intercept. So even though they have different y-intercepts, they have the same slope or they're parallel. Excellent. And we would do almost the same exact process 
in question number five, we're really only changing one thing because they want a line that's perpendicular. So I know I need opposite reciprocals of that slope. Opposite of negative two over three is positive. Reciprocal of two over three is three over two. So let's just flip that slope right away when we write our new equation. There we go. That's a great idea, Miss Murphy. Right away, right from the beginning, so you don't make a mistake. And now you're going to pick a point. Nope, we don't have to pick a point. They already picked it for us. It's three, four. X and Y. So our Y is a four. And our X is a three. Three halves of three. Well, three times three is nine. Nine divided by two. We'll just leave it as nine over two. Subtract nine halves from the four. You might want to use your calculator for this. Four minus alpha y equals nine over two is negative half. B is negative half, negative one over two. And we can put those two pieces of information, our slope and y-intercept, into our final equation. Beautiful. So there you have it. That is how you write the equation of a line parallel or perpendicular to another line. So we have one more practice problem that we're going to be posting the answer key to. Um, you try and take the time and do it yourself. And if you have any questions, you can reach myself through uh, or Miss Murphy through email, through Schoology, or through Remind. And just before we, we leave, Mrs. Telhami, yes. we're going to reiterate, we're going to say to you again, if you are looking to get credit for attendance for today, please make sure, which you must have done to watch this video, that you're signing in. If you're not signing in and watching the video, you're not getting attendance credit. So each and every day, continue to do what you did today. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.